Peanut M&Ms are a tasty treat, but have you ever noticed that some of them don't have peanuts inside? These solid nuggets of chocolate are rare and delicious. So, I built a machine that can predict whether a peanut M&M has a peanut in the center or is pure chocolate. But before I show you how it does that, we need to go back about six months to when I first had this idea. A while back, I made a video about my automatic M&M launcher, which launched regular M&Ms into your mouth on command. At one point during the design process, I considered launching peanut M&Ms, but they were too irregular in shape, not to mention their teeth-destroying potential. But I was not about to let that stop me from enhancing my peanut M&M snacking experience. So, how do we tell the difference between M&Ms that have peanuts and those that don't? We could look at the roundness of the candy, as peanuts are typically oblong in shape. However, this solution doesn't always work, as there are some round peanuts. My first idea was to use x-rays to see through the candy, and thus determine if it has a peanut or not. However, x-rays are extremely dangerous if not handled properly. So, I opted for a different approach that didn't contain the risk of making me grow an extra head. Rather than trying to see through the M&M, I decided to try to calculate its density. If you're not familiar with the concept of density, it's really simple. The density of an object is just the ratio of its mass to its volume. In other words, density describes how much stuff an object has per unit of volume. Take these two bottles for example. Let's say they both have the exact same volume, but one of them is only half full. We can calculate the density of each of these bottles by dividing their mass by their volume. As a side note, the mass of an object is equal to its weight when on planet Earth. Make no mistake, mass and weight are different terms that aren't always equal, but for the purposes of this video, they can be used interchangeably. As you can see, the bottle on the left has a lower density than the bottle on the right. That's because the bottle on the left is only half full, so it weighs less than the one on the right, which is completely full. And, since both bottles have the same volume, this means that the ratio of weight to volume has to be lower for the bottle on the left. Please note that this doesn't mean one object is more dense than another if it weighs more. For example, let's grow the bottle on the left so it's much larger than the bottle on the right, growing the water with it. As you can see, the bottle on the left is now significantly heavier than the bottle on the right, but it is still less dense. That's because when we grew the bottle, the weight and the volume increased by the same factor, so the weight to volume ratio didn't change. Now that we understand how density works, you may already see where I'm going with this. According to Google, chocolate is more dense than shelled peanuts. That means, if we could calculate the density of a peanut M&M, in theory, we could determine whether there is a peanut in the center, as the candies without peanuts would be more dense than those with peanuts. Determined to test my hypothesis, I set out to build a machine that could measure the volume, weight, and therefore the density of these candies. Unfortunately, in order to accurately measure the volume of an irregular object like a peanut M&M, you basically need a 3D scanner. Not only are 3D scanners expensive, but on top of that, most of them appear well suited for scanning larger objects, not something so small as an M&M. But you know what they say, when the going gets tough, the tough build their own 3D scanners entirely from scratch. After several revisions, here's what I ended up with. My design was based largely off of this 3D scanner I found on Instructables, which I will link to in the description. My 3D scanner consists of three main components, a Raspberry Pi camera, a line laser, and a rotation platform driven by a stepper motor. The laser shines across the center of the platform at approximately a 45 degree angle from the camera. 
with a Raspberry Pi acting as the brains of the scanner and an Arduino as a coprocessor. Let's look at the scanning process one step at a time. First, a candy is placed on the rotating platform and the lid is closed to eliminate interference from any external light sources. Next, the Raspberry Pi takes an image, then we filter out all light except the green laser line seen on the M&M. This leaves us with a set of points that follow the contour of the object, which is marked in red. What we need to determine now are the X, Y, and Z coordinates for each of those points. Let's look at this point to start. The Y value is simply the distance from the surface of the platform to that point, and the X value is the distance from the center of rotation of the platform to that point. All we need now is the Z coordinate, which we can find using some basic trigonometry. Looking at it from above, we can construct a right triangle that stretches between the center of the platform and the point we are trying to measure. Where one leg is equal to our X coordinate, and one angle is equal to the angle at which the laser strikes the object. Then, using good old Sokotoa, we can determine that our Z coordinate is equal to our X coordinate divided by the tangent of our laser angle. Since we know both the laser angle and the X coordinate, we can solve this equation for Z. Once we've calculated the X, Y, and Z coordinates for all of the points in the current image, we rotate the platform by a few degrees, take another image, and repeat the process, capturing more and more slices of the object as we go. Then, once we have rotated the object a full 360 degrees, all we have to do is add all of the slices together, then convert to real-world units using a pixel calibration, and there you have it! We've created a complete 3D model of our object. I even 3D printed some of the models for a side-by-side -side comparison. Now that we can finally measure the volume of our M&M, we still need to measure its weight. And the weight differences between M&Ms are quite small, so a bathroom scale wasn't gonna cut it. Instead, I built a custom scale using one of these 100 gram load cells. After the scanning process is complete, a servo sweeps the M&M off the rotating platform and onto the scale. Once the M&M's weight has been recorded, we have everything we need to calculate its density. Simply dividing the candy's weight by its volume gives us the density. Then, a second servo sends the M&M out one chute if the density lies above a threshold, or out the other chute if it lies below the threshold. All we have to do now is find the right threshold so that the density of M&M's without peanuts falls above the threshold, and that of M&M's with peanuts falls below it. To do that, I scanned a ton of M&M's. Based upon this data, I found that there was a very small but consistent increase of density if the M&M didn't have a peanut inside, thus confirming my original hypothesis. It took me a while to find the right threshold, but after a rusty start, my machine began hitting its stride, and it started to find peanutless peanut M&Ms all on its own. You might be wondering, how accurate is this contraption? Well, I'm glad you asked. Here are the statistics I've generated from running about 200 scans. First off, based on my sampling, solid chocolate peanut M&Ms comprise about 3.4% of all peanut M&Ms, which means there's about one solid candy for every 29 peanut candies. In terms of the machine's accuracy, solid chocolate M&Ms are sorted into the correct bowl 71.4% of the time and peanut M&Ms are sorted correctly 75% of the time. What this boils down to is that solid chocolate M&Ms will comprise about 10% of the chocolate bowl. Now that may sound bad, but remember, my earlier estimate had solid M&Ms at only 3.4% of the total group. That means the frequency of solid M&Ms is now almost 300% of what it was prior to sorting. So, will every M&M in this bowl be solid chocolate? No but your chances of finding one will be about three times better if you eat out of this bowl than if you ate straight out of the bag. And that, in my ever so humble opinion, is not too shabby. As always, if this video earned it, please consider subscribing and clicking the bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. And if you want to support more videos like this, please consider contributing to my Patreon page. Thanks for watching!